Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of my videos and today I've got another really beautiful study. This particular one comes from John Beasley, who was an English player. And uh, this particular one I really quite enjoy because White has only got sort of a finite amount of moves, but only one of the moves works in this position. So uh, what's just happened is Black has just played his Rook from uh, G8 to G6, delivering check to the white king. Now there's three, there's four possible moves that white can do in this position but only one of them works. So it has to be a blocking move, you can't move this king as you can see this king uh, controls this square, you can't obviously run away as he'd be running into the check. So the only moves that he can do are either blocking with the queen like this or blocking with the bishop on these two squares. But as I say only one of these moves work. So see if you can solve it, it's a really nice solution. Okay, so going into the actual solution itself, we're going to discount firstly uh, the move uh, queen to c6. This isn't really a very good move. After the rook captures here, uh, this isn't a great position, the king can go back. In an actual fact, uh, black can just stay along this diagonal and uh, should be able to at least get the draw in this position. Um, so it's not it's a failed solution in that regard. Uh, so what else can black white do? Well, another move that is possible, but it just doesn't quite work because black has got a very nice trick here is let's say if queen comes to b6 and this is probably the move that a lot of you might have made it looks like it makes sense because after the rook captures we're left with a rook a bishop and a pawn but there's a problem here and that is that black has not got a legal move you'll notice that all the squares around him are not able are not accessible so unfortunately this is a stalemate so this doesn't quite work this solution either so going back so we've now looked at those two queen moves. Let's have a look at the bishop moves. Now, the first bishop move uh, actually doesn't work, but there's a, a slight, there's a, a small, I guess, difference in the position. I'll show you the, the correct solution, and then I will show you the wrong solution and tell you why it's wrong. So the correct solution here is bishop to d6. Uh, a very nice blocking move, but there's a reason behind this. After the rook captures, and now we play queen to b6. You'll notice here that after the rook takes the queen, which is pretty much uh, forced in this position, um, then then when the pawn recaptures, you'll notice now that there's no longer this stalemating idea because this bishop is no longer controlling this diagonal. So white, in fact, has to give up all of his material and not be greedy to then win this position. And from here, it's a very easy uh, win here. Now the king comes to b8, only legal move, pawn to b7, and the king has to come to c7. It's the only legal move um, that doesn't involve a check, and now the white king can come to a7. The pawn is going to promote. This is an easy theoretical win for white, a queen, a queen and king versus a king. If you don't know how to solve these positions, have a look online for kings and queens versus king positions. So, going back. But it's interesting that this position works, but the other one doesn't work. Why doesn't uh, bishop to f6 work? You might be asking yourself. Well, after the rook captures in f6, makes sense, throwing in the check, and now we block with our queen here. Black has got a very, very sneaky move in this position, and that's the move rook to d6. I really like this move. The idea is this. If, let's say, the queen were to capture this rook, well, I'm afraid to say this is stalemate. So there's a slight difference in the position. You see, when the bishop came to, to d6 first, we've forced the rook to come here first. So he hasn't got this stalemating trick. After the queen comes to b6, there's now black to move. There's a slight change in the position that allows this stalemating trick to happen. So going back, you see the difference? You know, if the bishop comes here, this position is different because this rook is now white to move in this position. And well, what can he do here? Uh, he's not going to be able uh, to deliver uh, to get his pawn promoted or win this game. If he takes the queen, as I say, that's stalemate. Another move that could be tried in this position is what about uh, the move uh, king to b5, you might be asking yourself, getting out of the check. The problem with this is black has got a simple way of drawing this game now. After he captures with the rook, 
um, even if the king or the pawn takes is going to uh, be an easily drawn position. So just to show you this, after pawn captures, uh, the king can come to either b7 or b8. Both moves work. The problem here is white cannot make progress. His king is not in front of the pawn and he's unable to make progress in this endgame. So just to show an example, if let's say a move like this, let's say b8 what happens. Uh, I don't know, let's go to, let's go for example, c6. Uh, the king can just maintain opposition. If the pawn moves forward, we go to b8 and then this is a stalemate position. Very, very well known uh, uh, drawn position in king and pawn endings. And then going back, if the king captures here, this is no good as well as black can get main uh, opposition in this position on b8. And it doesn't matter where this king goes. If he goes to a6, we scoot over to either a8. We can actually even go to c7 as well. This is also a drawing position. Uh, but if, let's say, he goes to c6 as well, king to a7 is an easy way to draw the game. We're just going to go after this pawn. After the king comes here, we uh, can just maintain the opposition with... Uh, the move b7. White is not going to be able to win this endgame. So very, very nice. Going back though, there's one more move that's really interesting is what happens after, uh, let's say, queen comes to c6. Let's say blocks the check this way. Uh, in actual fact, uh, this is actually a lost position now as after rook captures uh, although you can come to b5, there's a bit of a problem here. You haven't actually got enough material and you haven't got a way to capture back this rook. So in actual fact, black is winning in this position, a rook and a king versus a lone pawn. And the pawn that's not very well advanced is in fact a, an easy win for black. So I think that's quite interesting as well, quite instructive as well. So there we go. A really, really interesting position. It looks, as I say, deceptively easy. You're up a rook. Uh, well, you're up a queen, in fact, uh, in this position. But uh, what Black is playing some very, very tricky stuff to try and get the draw. So make sure you don't fall into uh, these traps that Black set up when you play your next endgame. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular video. If you like these videos, make sure to leave a like. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I do have loads of endgame uh, positions, endgame puzzles for you to solve. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you soon. Take care.